Hey, it's Nitya with Karma Chameleon. Welcome friends. I am filming on May 5th, the first day of the fiery month of the snake. And it is a full moon with an eclipse. Taking it easy. Got my mug of tea. So feng shui stories is what we're talking about again today. And remembered a few more. So if you're interested in Bazi Chinese astrology and traditional feng shui, you have come to the right place. Please subscribe and follow, and I welcome your comments. Please keep them positive, non-religious, non-political, just simple, nice comments or questions. Thank you. All right, so remembering a few interesting situations where a child took over a house. So, uh, long ago, I went to a friend's house and her kids were running around in their underpants, two little boys, with their little plastic swords, jumping on the coffee table, climbing all over the couch. The house was a mess. This was a family on the verge of collapse and it did in fact collapse. One of the things, the many things that happened was she had decided to paint the rooms of the house really fun, bright, crazy colors and none of the colors matched the Bagua. And this has happened before where, um, but let me, Let's earmark that, okay? Paint colors, disaster. Let me just say there's a lot to be said for eggshell white, and then you can hang nice pieces of art on your wall. I have lots of art. All right. So what I noticed was that in every room, there were toys on the floor. There were photos of the kids on the wall. Photos of kids on coffee tables or wherever. If you really lift it up, which is a lot of the problem with our house, especially if you have a family, it's so easy to get lost in that worm view of your day-to-day -day life. You miss the big picture. When you really pulled out from this house, what did I see? Kids everywhere in photographs, in their art on the refrigerator wall door, you know, uh, toys on the floor, every room in the house. So the number one thing I said was get some organizing things, cubbies, toy box, shelving, things like this to contain the disastrous mess and select one room, just one, in which all of their toys have to be kept. Then we're going to take all those fabulous photos and put them in one place in the house. Hopefully it's an Eastern wall because the East represents family. And in that, we can bring in the focus of the house, not to being dominated by the children, but enjoyed by everyone individually and collectively. And this is really important. A mom and dad, or two moms or two dads, or however the flavor of your family is, you go to bed at night, there should not be a single sign of your child or a photo of them or any family members. It is a sanctuary for your rest and for you to unplug for however long you get to sleep in your own agency, in your own personal intimate space. So that when you come home from work, when you have a moment in your day where you are possibly struggling or just simply need to take a pause, you can go into your bedroom, close the door, and take five minutes or 50 minutes if whatever for whatever you're allowed. Another story, and we're still earmarking too much bright colors and kids taking over the house. 
It's another one to that. All right, so this other one that I'm thinking of where a child took over the house was even trickier because this was not a kid. This was an adult. This was the oldest son of a family who was really struggling in getting his life started. He moved back in in his mid-20s and went even so far as to begin to wear his father's coat, his father's clothes, his father's shoes. The direction of the bedroom that he occupied was in the Northeast, which is the domain of the father, the man of the house. And they could not motivate this man to get out. He set that room up like an encampment and he wasn't budging. And I remember looking at his astrology and I said, you know, have you ever thought of skiing? I'm not kidding. What got him out of there? He got a job in Colorado at a ski resort, whatever it takes. So, hey, this was another great story. This was a family that actually wound up moving out of this house. Um, and I helped them with laying the ha their new home on the land they had purchased. I helped and assisted with the floor plan of this new house, made some adjustments. And then when the house was Getting ready to be completed, we chose the date to put the roof on so that it would have a really good auspicious start. Beautiful things. But when I first went to their house, one of the worst parts, I don't know where you live, but let's just say some of these neighborhoods you can go into, get lost, and never make your way out. I went and saw these people before there were smartphones. And you're just working with a map on, in the drive, passenger seat of your car. So I, I finally wheeled my way deep into this neighborhood. This family had one child, a daughter, who was completely taking over the house. Now, she was a teenager, so there weren't toys everywhere. But there were big, beautiful, humongous pictures of her on the wall. Like, you would have thought this child was the queen of the family. And she had a bedroom pretty close to the marital bedroom that was in the Southwest. The placement of the mother and the woman of the house. And in addition to that hot mess, they also had painted the interior of the house I'll never forget the bathroom was pumpkin orange. Little powder room, tiny little room. You know, you got your toilet, you got the little sink. Pumpkin orange. It was so like bright and dark all at the same time. It was just too much. And throughout the house, there's so many really deep colors. So when I finished the walkthrough, I said to the, the dad, I said, the man of the house, I said, uh, do you like painting? He said, I don't mind it. Why? And I said, you're going to be painting a lot of the rooms of this house. Because again, the colors didn't match the Bagua. And one of the things about houses in general is it really is nice to just have a warm white interior. I know gray is the color right now. Everybody wants their car to look like it's got putty on it. Can't stand it. Everybody wants their interior of their house to be gray like it's some kind of an institution. It has no warmth. It has no life. Please let this trend end soon. <laughs> The thing about gray and tones of gray, not only is it, it's very yin, it can be very heavy and very cold. And it's metal. And you put metal 
In the Southeast, where your money is, there's a conflict. Who wants conflict with their money? Or in the Southeast, where you have family and health, you want those things challenged? No, the worst being the South, fire, your reputation, how you're recognized, metal and fire, terrible, disastrous mess. So you want to always align your house to the Bagua so that the, the elements are in flow and harmony. Well, if you're in question as to what that is, go back to eggshell white. So if you're wondering why this blind is pulled down, it's because I'm sitting in the Northwest, which is where the five star is this year. I come in here and use this living room for things that are positive and uplifting to help shift some of the negative energy that's in here this year. But I also make sure to keep the room as dark as I can. And that is the Northwest window. So I especially want to keep that energy blocked. All right, so stories, stories, more stories. Felt like there was another one having to do with a child, and I'm sure there is, because I know there was one having to do with my own family. I should have known better because I, by this point, was a new feng shui consult consultant, and I had my stepdaughter, my oldest stepdaughter at the time, moved in. She was a teenager. It's a whole nother flavor, right? Of child energy. And she already had mother, daughter, major issues. And she, that bedroom that she moved into was in the Southwest and there was not a thing I could do about it. Not a thing. And I paid the price for it. Let me tell you. And sometimes our houses are like that. So how could I have maybe worked to counter it? Make sure that in the center of the house, there was a dominant influence of me to make sure I hadn't gotten lost in the house. These are things I thought of after the fact, after the fact that I left. <laughs> that was the outcome. Um, oh, this was the other one. This is, I'll wrap up with this. This was rich. This had so many layers of messed up. It had so many layers of what you don't want that it's a really good example. This was a woman who had married a man and could not get him out of the house. So I go over there. First of all, she's at the end of a cul-de-sac. Now, cul-de-sacs shaped like this, and it really is like this road, right? So the road's coming in. This is a poison arrow. I know, you gotta love these terms. That energy, every car coming in there, that energy is coming right at your house. So it's considered kind of like an ongoing attack. Now, second, if you wanna look at cul-de-sacs, and you've got this round shape, the neck, the houses on either side of the neck of where you come into the cul-de-sac, they're considered houses in which the chi, the energy is strangled. Not good. Anyway, so things we can do when you're in a cul-de-sac in that situation where the chi is coming right at you is you plant really high boxwood to block the chi and put a bagua mirror on the front door. So, but that's not what happened with this house. So we've got that. We've also got a really weird landscape, really weird. Now, in form school, which I studied with Peter Lung from Hong Kong, Form school says that to the left is the dragon, which is the, the male side of the house, should be higher than the tiger on the right. Actually, it'd be like this for you. Anyway, whatever. 
All right, so this is, the dragon is also money. When I looked at that side of the house, because of the landscape, the land was rising up and there was a big house here, big house. So here is her house, much smaller, much more simple, humble little Cape Cod. And up kind of a bit on a hill is this big, big house. You could feel how imbalanced the energy was just standing outside the house, okay? It looked like this house could just fall over and crush hers. Then when you look to the tiger side, there was none. It was, um, I think she parked in front or there might've been a driveway. I don't think there was a driveway. It was like, you, you here's the end of her house. And then there's kind of land that comes over here with some trees, which is fine. You want, you know, something that's representing her. But the turtle, the back of the house, was a straight drop down. So accessing the backyard could really only happen through the downstairs, the, the lower basement level, terrace level. And it was such a precipice that this house was kind of stuck on that you felt like you could go and flick it and it would just fall right down into this really low backyard. And, um, and then I had this weird moment. And this brings in some of the ghost stories I told in a previous video where she felt like the house was haunted. And so I looking around the house, see what I can find. And all of a sudden we go into her bedroom and then we're going into the bathroom. I told you I never forget a house. We go into the bathroom and all of a sudden I feel it. And I think it was because of the, you know, a bathroom um, is a small shape in most houses. It's, you know, it's, it's like you're in this small box and I'm standing there and she's kind of at the door and I'm standing there and all of a sudden I, I can hear train wheels. I'm hearing train wheels. I'm seeing train car. I'm seeing a little girl um, in a hat with like a little pea coat and she's crouched down on the floor of not a train, but a train car. And all of a sudden, I get chills thinking about it. I looked at her and I said, I think in, a, in your last life, you were a child of the Holocaust and you were on a train and something in this house is triggering you. And I don't exactly remember what she said specifically. I mean, this was a long time ago, but she started to cry and she said something about what you just said struck me so deeply as if you were helping me to remember something that is so deep in me that I can't access it. And it really was a moment. It really was a moment. And eventually she got him to move out we did some things in the house to give her more power and to diminish his power. And we also, when she put the house up for sale, I had her, she was feeling badly that the next owner was gonna be buying this house with terrible feng shui. And I said, why don't you get an angel statue to put in the backyard so that the angel is at the back of the house, blessing the back that was such a precipice drop. And that really made her feel better about that. 
lots of stories, my friends. Takeaway from today, for sure. Simplify the interior paint colors. Make sure that they at least match the bagua of your home. Three, be really careful with where, which direction your children's bedrooms are in and that their art, the photos of them and their things are contained in the correct placement. Again, like family photos in the East, children's things organized in a singular playroom or their room. And always offer yourself a space in your home that is for you to rejuvenate and to take those needed pauses in your day. Thank you so much. Be well.